My name is Michael Dennison, Research Director at Control Risks, and I'm joined by Dr. Victor Gao, former General Counsel of CNOC and Director of the China National Association of International Studies. Dr. Gao has been presenting this morning on the role of China in the world, uh, economic, in world economic outlook and uh, in global energy markets. Uh, Dr. Gao, um, how do you foresee China's role in the global gas market developing over the next decade? Uh, thank you very much. It's a great pleasure to talk to you. Uh, I would say China right now is still relatively small in the gas area in the world. Uh, gas consumption only accounts for about 5.5% of the total energy consumption in China, uh, way behind the coal, which is the dominant factor in China, as well as the uh, crude oil. However, I think uh, because of the high efficiency of gas and the uh, greater cleanness of the use of gas, um, China wants to commit itself to a much higher percentage of gas use going forward. And uh, even if you talk about quadrupling of the uh, use of gas in China, uh, gas use in China will still only reach the global average. So I think there will be a lot of potential to go in gas consumption in China. In terms of developing domestic production, how important are unconventionals? How important is shale in that mix? Well, China is uh, very rich in energy resources, but mostly it is in uh, coal. And uh, in terms of natural gas as well as uh, petroleum, the uh, ownership is way below uh, world average. However, uh, recent studies have indicated that China has vast uh, quantities of shale gas reserve. Of course, this is subject to uh, further exploration and confirmation in scientific manners. Uh, ha however, uh, recent indications are already pointing out that China's uh, shale gas reserve is very, very abundant. But the two issues that China need to address first, one is the use of water, because China as a whole is very short in terms of water resources. And secondly, it is the technologies involved, uh, the fracking, etc. China wants to make sure that the uh, technology used in exploring and producing shale gas will not do further damage to the uh, water resources situation in China. We've seen that in many countries, North America and parts of Europe, there's been some questioning of, of the fracking process. Is there a sense that there's a debate within China about the, you, you mentioned water usage, for example, which could be quite high, and China um, in some areas is water deficient. Is that, a, is that a, a, an issue of public debate or concern for the Chinese government? China is a, a recent uh, comer onto the scene of shale gas. As a result, China does not possess the uh, world-class uh, technologies and standards in the fracking technology and other technologies associated with the uh, exploration and production of shale gas. Therefore, my view is that in the coming few years, China really need to increase its cooperation with the major guys in the world, uh, including in the United States in particular, in shale gas technology and equipment mm -hmm. Uh, and scientific use of shale gas so that China can uh, narrow that gap significantly. I think on the Chinese side, uh, uh, two concerns we need to really get over with. One is uh, whether the fracking uh, technology will uh, be used without too much damage to the underground water resources and secondly, whether the uh, development of shale gas in general will not cause too much of waste of water yeah. resources in China. China has struck up a series of commercial relationships with states around in its neighborhood, if you like, in Central Asia, Southeast Asia, uh, and, and beyond. Do you, how do you foresee the dynamic in those relations? Are there certain regions which China wants to prioritize above others? Or is it looking to take resources where they're available, where it can get good prices? or where it sees potential upstream investments for its companies? Now, China has committed to a double its uh, economy uh, measured by GDP uh, in 10 years. That is, by 2020, China's GDP need to be double that of 2010. That means in the coming few years, 
the energy consumption amount in China will almost double. Um, uh, even though we are increasing the energy efficiency, uh, uh, it will be less than doubling on the energy uh, consumption, but the significant additional increase in the use and demand for energy in China is unavoidable. Uh, therefore, I would say uh, there is only one way to go, especially in terms of oil and gas. That is, China need to strengthen its cooperation with international uh, uh, partners. Uh, the rule of thumb is that wherever there is good resources, oil or gas, China need to increase its cooperation with them, and in particular in its neighboring countries, either Russia to China's north, or Central Asian countries, which are increasingly important to China's West, uh, especially in terms of natural gas, or even, for example, uh, countries like Myanmar, which does not have a significant amount of gas or oil production right now, but at least they have the potential, at least they can serve as a major uh, transportation route in terms of gas and oil pipelines, shipping energies from the Middle East and Africa into China's uh, uh, southwestern part of China. Mm. Uh, therefore, I would say, uh, if you look at China's relations with its land neighbors, which number 14 in total, as well as sea neighbors, uh, the cooperation need to be significantly beefed up in terms of oil and gas uh, cooperation. What role do you see for LNG? Well, LNG is uh, becoming more and more popular in China. I would say uh, on the land, the natural gas will be shipped by pipelines uh, from not only internally in China from Xinjiang to uh, China's east coast and uh, southern coast, uh, also uh, from Central Asia uh, to Turkmenistan, Uzbekistan, all the way through Kazakhstan mm -hmm. into China. Uh, uh, two pipelines are already being built, uh, which will play a very important mm -hmm. role in uh, natural gas. However, shipment from uh, overseas markets uh, to China mostly will involve LNG, and China is already importing LNG in big amount from mm -hmm. Australia, which is now supplying China's Guangdong province, from Malaysia, which is supplying Shanghai, Indonesia, which is supplying Fujian province, and Qatar, I believe, which will supply China's uh, Zhejiang province. In China, there is a kind of a geographical division, C and OOC, where I used to work, is mostly responsible for supplying the coastal provinces south of the Yangtze mm -hmm. River, mm -hmm. and then to the north of the Yangtze River to be taken care of by another big oil company. And I think uh, in the southern part of China, uh, along the coast, uh, major infrastructure projects are already being built up and uh, will continue to be expanded in terms of LNG terminals, pipelines, etc., processing facilities. Mm. Uh, so I think this will continue for uh, years, if not for the coming couple of decades to come. And just a final question. I don't know how far you model ahead forecasts for energy usage, but China's undergoing at the moment a process of rapid urbanization of now of second and third tier cities, which will effectively sustain the demand for industrial metals and commodities, perhaps globally over the next decade or so. Do you foresee a point beyond that where energy use or energy supply levels off to, to a certain extent, or are you projecting continuing growth um, in, in demand for primary energy? Well, there are different ways to look at it. One key factor we need to look at it is the urbanization rate. Uh, as the end of last year, 2012, the urbanization urbanization rate was only reaching about 52, 53 mm percent. -hmm. And that need to continue uh, mm -hmm. until it reaches at least about 70 percent, which mm -hmm. still measures very low compared with all the other developed countries. Mm -hmm. In countries, uh, in developed countries, the, the urbanization rate can be as high as more than 90 percent. So even if we use a very conservative estimate of the Chinese urbanization role, rate going forward, 70 percent is at least you know uh, something that China needs to uh, accomplish. What does that mean? That means more or less 20 percentage points. Uh, um, and uh, a 10 percent of the Chinese population is about 140 million. So you are talking mm -hmm. about 200 and 
80 million people, or so roughly about 300 million people, who still need to be urbanized. Uh, that means uh, infrastructure will continue to be built up. That means uh, you know houses, for example, um, uh, public uh, health facilities, educational facilities, etc. It will be uh, built up. And 300,000 million people is more or less the equivalent of the total population of the United States of America uh, today. So you are talking about significant amount of economic activities which still need to be carried out in the coming at least one or two or even three decades. And uh, we are also talking about profound transformation of the Chinese society and the economy and the nation as a whole. So I personally think this dynamic growth of the Chinese economy will continue forward roughly around 7% or 8% GDP growth in another couple of decades. Dr. Gao, we must leave it there, but thank you very much for, first of all, speaking at Flame 2013 um, in Amsterdam and also for um, the interview. Thank you very thank much. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you for having me. Thank, thank you. you.